Hey guys, welcome back to Keystone Practice Test Mod 2. This is going to be a video for questions 16 and 17. So here we are with another box and whisker plot. It says the final exam grades in a science class are summarized on the box and whisker plot shown below. 20 students took the exam. 20. 20 students. Let's highlight that. 20 students took the exam. Okay. Which statement is true about the science final exam grades? One thing I want to mark down here, let's not forget from earlier, each part of a box and whisker plot is 25% of the data. Let me kind of mark that down here. So there's 25% of the data located between your minimum and quartile 1. 25% between quartile 1 and the median. Remember, this is your median. 25% between the median and the upper quartile, or quartile 3. And 25% between quartile 3 and the maximum. So they want us to ask or answer which statement is true. So we're looking for the true statement. Okay. Let me tell you what is true, and then now, better yet, change my mind. Let's just go step by step. Let's go A to D and see what's true and what's not true. Let's start with letter A, because this is what your brain's going to have to do anyway. Letter A says, about 75% of students scored between 72 and 84 on the exam. Okay, so let's find 72. 72 is right here. You can see it right here, 72. And 84 is right here, 84, okay? Now, I would argue that that's only 50%. If this did not say 75, but rather said 50%, I would go with it. But from 72 to 84, that's only 50% of my data. I'm getting rid of letter A. Okay, let's go to letter B. 10 students scored between 72 and 84. So they're still in that same section of the graph. So if 50% of my students are in here, and I've got 20 students who took the exam. Let's take 50% of 20. Okay, between 72 and 84, that represents 50% of my data. 50% of my data is 50% of 20. That's the same as 0.5 times 20. And if I take 0.5 times 20, I get 10. Bingo. I'm going to go with B. 10 students did score between 72 and 84. Now let's look at why C and D aren't true. C says 25% of students scored over 72. I would argue that. Here's 72. I would argue that 75% of students scored above 72. So it's definitely not that. And finally, letter D. More than 15 students scored higher than 80. Okay, well, let's find 80. 80 is right here, the median. 50% of students, 50% scored higher than 80. We already know that 50% is 10 students, not 15 students. So I'm going to throw out D as well. I'm just going to go ahead and go with B. Okay. And number 17, changing gears here, back to table. A function is shown in the table below. Which equation represents the function? Again, there are really three different ways you could do this. Uh, my most fun way is to pick two points off the chart. I usually end up picking the first two. I might pick something like negative 2, negative 1, and 0, negative 3. And I've done this several times in these videos, I'll write the equation. So calling this x, y, x, y, and calling this my first set, and this my second set, I'm going to go ahead and roll out my slope. So knowing that slope is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, I can fill in my values, and that's going to give me negative 3 minus, careful here, negative 1, that's a double negative, negative 3 minus negative 1 over 0 minus negative 2. 
So you have these minuses in the formula. They go with these minuses. But then these values just happen to also be negative, so be careful of the double negative. So now we have negative 3 minus negative 1. That's the same thing as negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. 0 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 0 plus 2, which is 2. Divide them, and you get negative 1. Well, lucky me. Let's look at these answers. There's only one answer in this set that has a negative 1 slope, and it's letter A. Letter B has a positive 1 slope, C a negative 3 slope, and D a negative 3 slope. Now, I can verify my B value just by looking at my y-intercept. It just so happens that 0, negative 3 is my y-intercept because y-intercept is, is defined as the value of y when x is 0. So this is my B, so that hooks up well. So there you have it. Now, another way to do it. You could have chosen letter A by plugging each of these x values one at a time in for x and seeing if the result was the y. I'll show you what I mean. So like if I would start with negative 2, if I insert negative 2 in for this x, I would have y equals opposite of negative 2 minus 3. Well, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Positive 2 minus 3 is negative 1, which I have right here. If I had put 0 in for x, I would have the opposite of 0 minus 3. Well, the opposite of 0 is still 0. Minus 3 is negative 3. If I would put 2 in, y equals the opposite of 2 minus 3. Well, that's negative 5. Check. And finally, if I put 4 in, the opposite of 4 minus 3 is negative 7. The thing about doing a problem this way, guess and check, is you have to test all of them. If you don't test all of them, you can't be sure it works all the time. So make sure you test them all. And the final way you could do this is back to the TI-84 again. If you take your TI-84 and hit STAT, we went through this earlier, I'm not sure if you watched that video, STAT, edit, and you highlight L2, clear, enter, highlight L1, clear, enter. It's going to give you a clean slate. Put in all your x's. I've got negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Put in all your y's. Negative 1, negative 3, negative 5, negative 7. Then press stat, calculate, number 4, lin reg. Arrow down so you get to calculate. Hit enter, and there it is. A is negative 1, B is negative 3, so if you insert those, you would have Y equals negative 1X minus 3, which is letter choice A. So lots of different ways to go about it. Pick, your, pick the one you like and go for it. And that's the end of this video. See you next time.